is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome my friends and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. And welcome to Monday's edition of the DCEU Daily. And if you're feeling charitable, please smash that subscribe button. And if you're feeling even more charitable, smash that like button and go over to Twitter and follow me at Movies TV Mad. But it's always great to hear from Jim Lee, isn't it? Have a listen to this. Hi, I'm, oh, I'm, uh, my name is Aaron. I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. My question is quick and simple. Should we see the Snyder Cut? <laughs> so you know by say the word Snyder Cut that the clickbait headline is Jim Lee talks about the Snyder Cut. And then you know in my mouth that's a pretty hit. So just a good for an honest opinion created for a lesson. It's buffering. We have to wait for it to, which is really, really annoying. If you ever become successful, if you ever become famous, this is how you dig yourself out of a hole. Of course, Jim can't come out and say, of course, the Snyder Cut's going to come out. He said it's a very, very difficult question to answer. And he says, basically, as soon as I say Snyder Cut, which he does, he says the clickbait articles are going to start. And then the guy asking the question goes, well, I'm not looking for a clickbait article. He goes, no, you look, look, look like a, an upstanding gentleman. And then he does something magnificent to dig himself out of a question he can't and will not answer. He can't say it. So he starts talking about the fans and how some people say Snyder fans are not DC fans. And then he says, all fans are DC fans. It's a great look. It's a great point. But it's also great at diverting the narrative. But then he does a very interesting thing. He's, he, he diverts from that topic and talks about the DC films in production. Now, something he said, I didn't actually know this. Or maybe I did know and I forgot. I didn't realize next year that Black Adam was part of the slate. So next year, we've got the Suicide Squad, we've got the Batman, and we've got Black Adam. I think Black Adam will be out around December 2021. That's really exciting, and Jim's right. Three movies in one year, the first time for the DCEU, right? And it's interesting. Is the Batman a DCEU movie? We know that Black Adam and the Suicide Squad are three anticipated movies in one year, and we've still got this course correction happening in Wonder Woman 1984 this very year. 
But it's just interesting, isn't it? When you look at Warner Brothers and you look at the mentality towards the Snyder Cut, you see it there and then. They, they go from tr trying to avoid answering a question about the Snyder Cut, about talking to the future, or talking about the future. And it's pretty clear for me that from, from what I saw, the way Jim answered that question is they don't seem to have, um, have an intention of releasing the Snyder Cut. Instead, they're burying their heads in the sand and looking to the future. Future, I'm looking forward to. Wonder Woman 84, uh, The Batman, Suicide Squad and Black Adam are all films I can't wait for and I'm pumped for. But it's just the mentality, isn't it? But well done, Jim Lee. You really, really uh, had a question that you didn't really want to answer. And as I say, if you're ever in his position or famous and you want to avoid answering something, you give the fans a little pat on the back. There, there, there. Now, by the way, this is what we've got coming out in the future. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, now, obviously, we had this little tease from Zack Snyder about maybe, re you know, shooting some Martian Manhunter scenes. I mean, it, on that clapperboard, he did say in the unlikely event, but who knows what's going on? This is the thing. But from the way he answered the question, to me, it doesn't seem like we can expect the Snyder Cut anytime soon, but that shouldn't dissuade anyone. We just need to keep on doing what we're doing. It's as simple as that. It's a long running battle. We all, we all want this film released yesterday. We don't, none of us, including me, don't understand why this studio won't just release this film. But you know what I would have asked him? It wouldn't have been about the Snyder Cut because I knew I would never have got a straight answer. I would have asked this question. Jim, can we expect a Superman movie in the cinema in the next five years? That's the question I want asked, right? I want to see a Superman film. I covered it yesterday on Superman's birthday here on the DCEU Daily, and I'm covering it again now. This is even more ridiculous than not getting the Snyder Cut. No Superman movie. That I find even that more frustrating than no Snyder Cut. And you know, you guys know how badly I want to see the Snyder Cut and the air cut of Suicide Squad. I think it's ridiculous. We haven't got it up till now. We're fighting for it. It's clearly a better film than the theatrical version of Justice League. But they are looking forward and they just want to ignore the fact with what happened with Justice League. But we have to keep on putting the pressure on. And we are doing a fabulous job. Never lose hope. Never lose hope. The fight is there. Everybody's talking about it. Um, the Snyder release, the Snyder Cut gets really, really good trends. But we should also be happy that there is a future within the DCEU. Because the actions of Kevin Sujihara and his decisions nearly cost the future of the DCEU. And I think, really, Hamada coming in and... And putting the DCEU back on a path that can actually work is amazing. But The Batman is a film that still nobody truly knows if it's part of the DCEU. And that's fascinating to me. It's something I keep on talking about because it's a question Matt Reeves won't answer. And that's interesting. And I think it's not a question we're going to have an answer to. Until we see this film, Wonder Woman 1984, the theatrical version, the cut. doesn't matter what I've seen, um, the test screening that I've seen. That is an irrelevance. It's what they put out there. And this course correction undoubtedly is what's going to happen. And I, I'm fascinated to see the reaction when Wonder Woman 1984 is seen. Because indeed, if we do get this timeline change, then undoubtedly... The Batman is part of the DCEU. I'm still convinced the Batman is part of the DCEU. I have no doubt. But I wanted to play that um, video from a con, right? I think it must have been yesterday. How he actually dug himself out of such a deep hole. It was such a proficient way. Well, I love the fans. All fans are DC fans. Now look at what we've got over here. Brilliant. Honestly, Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. It's just, you know what happened this morning, actually, talking about Zack Snyder, not nothing to do with Zack personally. Uh, we had a power cut 
But luckily, I had Man of Steel and Batman v Superman downloaded on, 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 Am on my Prime Video, which I've got on my tablet, one of my devices. And I was able to watch that. Uh, and I was watching it thinking, this, Matt, I was watching Man of Steel first of all, and I was thinking, this is such a good fucking film. I, it, it, it bereft me of anything, how you don't like that film. I know it's kind of different to what some people, how some people see Superman, but as a film in its own rights, and as a Superman film, it's really, really go. It's really, really good. It's really amazing. And I, I, I've discussed about Doctor Who. We had a big episode of Doctor Who last night, and everyone's talking about changing canon. It makes me laugh how people hold ownership to these legacy characters in whatever franchise we talk about, and they say this is the character, and the character can be can never be anything else. I think that's it's astounding that you never want to see a new, different vision of something when the creative is doing something exciting and new. Because ultimately, like Doctor Who, if you enjoy the classics, if you enjoy what RTD did or Moffat did, you can go and watch those seasons and those eras and allow for other people to enjoy a new vision. But no, we cancel people. We cancel creatives because they try and be bold and use their imagination. And that's what Snyder's version of Man of Steel and BVS is it's a new way of doing a superhero movie and if you don't like that instead of getting personal and toxic about the film and the creative you can go back to the film that you the versions that you prefer rather than doing this whole thing oh yeah it sucks it's a bad movie Man of Steel and BVS are not bad movies that maybe they're films that you don't like for whatever reason but you've got You've got the Donna film, you've got the Reeve version, you've got Superman Returns. You, you can read any comic you want. So, you know, it's this, I, this one makes me laugh about some fans. And I'm not just talking about DC fans or Doctor Who fans. There's this lack of vision and imagination when someone does something new and integral and visionary. It's panned as something bad. And it, it, it truly is astounding to me. The lack of vision in fandoms these days. This is my character. This is my character. Would never say that. When Superman Returns came out, Superman would never go away for five years. What? Not even to look for his planet, right? Come on. Krypton's his home, a home he never knew. And if he hears, if he hears news of a, rumors of astronomers saying that it still might be out there, of course he's going to search for it. The Return to Krypton sequence in Superman Returns is wonderful and visionary if you see on the bonus features on the Superman Returns Blu-ray. You should give it a watch. It's amazing. One of the best things I've seen in a, in a CBM. Great. But people reject it, won't even bother watching it because it's crap. Superman Returns is bad. Superman Returns isn't all bad. There's some elements I didn't like in the movie, but ultimately, um, him going back, back to look for Krypton is actually an awesome concept. But people just want to see what they've been given already. I, you know, it's like, I like this. It, let, me give you, let me give you an example, right? I love fruit pastels, right? But there's these brand new sweets been released, and they're sweets that I probably like, but they're not fruit pastels. So I won't eat them. No way! They'll never be as good as fruit pastels. Oh, whoever made those sweets sucks. And it's like the talk you hear about Snyder and Nolan and Goya and their films. It's like... Nobody's willing to accept something new and something visionary. And this is what fandoms are all about these days. And it's disappointing because we live in an era of streaming. We live in an era of, you know, millions and millions, but hundreds of millions being invested in films. And they look so wonderful in IMAX, in Blu-ray, in 4K. But we reject these visionary ideas. Everything has to be the way it used to be. And for me, it's a lack of vision on the consumer's part. It's not, it's not the problem of the creative. Now, I find Star Wars The Last Jedi a very, very underwhelming film. And it actually made me kind of fall out of love with Star Wars and not want to watch the films for a while. But it doesn't make it a bad film. It didn't work for me. But there's millions of people out there who love The Last Jedi. And that is their right. 
Ryan Johnson had an idea. It's not, look, listen, I know I'm talking Star Wars on a DC video, but this is important because it connects to what happened with Snyder, right? Ryan Johnson didn't employ himself. They got three, they wanted three different creatives to be involved with three different films in one trilogy. We all know J.J. Abrams should have been the one shaping all three movies. And for one reason or the other, it didn't happen. The mistake was with the studio. Johnson was brought in, told, look, mate, um, here's the clay. Mould it whatever way you want. He's going to do that. It's not his fault that many of us didn't like that. But we take we we focus on the wrong things. And it, there is this lack of vision. And that lack of vision from fandoms and the consumer is the very reason that Sujihara um, did to Zach what he did with BVS, got someone else to edit his film badly, and in the end, they had to get Zach's vision out. And then with Justice, they did the same thing with, uh, with Justice League, what they did with BVS. But worse, they got someone else to come in and reshoot it because of people like you out there who have no imagination and no vision. Superman shouldn't be dark. Superman doesn't smile. This, that, the other. No imagination, no vision. That's the problem with the consumer today. And it's an instead of saying, do you know what, this is not for me, I'll leave it alone. You get critics and pundits going over the same hate for something creative. But when it comes to something like The Invisible Man, this is an amazing version. And then you've got the director saying, well, this film isn't about The Invisible Man. Now, that's, that's something that triggers me, right? That they take an iconic character like The Invisible Man and, 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 make, and, and make, it, make it about... And turn it into a female-led film that has nothing to do with The Invisible Man. That's bad. That's bad. The Invisible Man's an okay, solid film. But at the end of the day, it isn't really a film about The Invisible Man. But everyone lords it and it's making loads of money, right? But it when it came to Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, the, the consumer lacked vision and imagination and panned the films as bad films. They are not bad films. They're just not your cup of tea. And that's OK. The conversations are still going on about Batman v Superman and how apparently it's a really bad film. It's not. It's just a film that you don't like and you won't expect. You don't like, right? Whatever I was going to say. And this is the lack of vision the consumer has these days, right? I like something that you don't, and that's fine. And it's not really the consumer's fault. It's the media. It's YouTubers. Yeah, I'm to blame as well, but the more successful ones, they grab hold of the negative and they manipulate the consumer until there is this toxicity. And that's the problem. And this is what went wrong with Zack Snyder. And this is why we're fighting for the Snyder Cup. So us people, right, but fighting for the Snyder Cup must continue having the vision, the vision, right? And the imagination, imagining how awesome this film will be. How amazing will it be to see General Swanwick reveal himself as Martian Manhunter to Clark and Lois just after they've got married? You imagine it and you see it and the, the reveal of Martian Manhunter. Keep on fighting. Keep on having vision. Keep on having imagination. And for you people who don't know how to feel about the Snyder Cut, go back and watch Man of Steel. Go back and watch Batman v Superman without reading Rotten Tomatoes reviews, without watching John Campion and seeing what he had to say. Make your own minds up. And I think you may have a, a, a more of a positive experience rather than basically not having a mind of your own and listening to these. Basically, I, I, I would, the, the analogy for me is that these people are troublemakers. Anyway, I want you to comment down below. I want you to like, share and subscribe. I want to know how you feel about Jim Lee's comments. I thought it was a masterful way of diverting from the actual question, but I want to know what you have to think. Please like, share and subscribe, and I'll be back tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. See you then.